personifications of the sun. Also, among all the nations of antiquity, altars, mounds, temples were dedicated to the worship of the sun. Even today, a lot of the ancient remains of these, you can see the, uh, the pyramids in the Yucatan and Egypt, the snake mounds of the American Indians, the ziggurats of Babylon and Chaldea, the round towers of Ireland, the massive rings of uncut stone in Britain and Normandy, Tower of Babel, which was according to scriptures, was built so that man might reach up to God, which is probably an astronom um, astronomical observatory. And so all of these were in parts worship to the sun. Another thing I thought interesting about it, concerning the annual passage of the sun to the twelve houses of the heavens, this is where a lot of more of these uh, gods come in that you hear of in, in ancient history. The sun, as he pursued his way through these living creatures of the zodiac, was set in, in allegories to assume the nature of or to triumph over the sign he entered, the sun thus becoming a bull in Taurus. A bull is also symbolic of Mithra. was worshipped by such as the Egyptians under the name of Apis, and by the Assyrians as Bel, or Baal, or Bull. In Leo, the sun became a lion slayer, Hercules, an archer in Sagittarius. In Pisces, the fish, the fishes, he was a fish Dagon, or Vishnu, the fish god of the Philistines and Hindus. And so if you go through and look at all of these ancient religions and these ancient gods they worshipped, they were all personifications of the sun when he would go in and, and out of these particular constellations of the time. And a lot of Egyptian history will show a chariot in front of the sun. So that's, they had this belief that the, there was a chariot that would pull the sun across the sky. And also, Enoch was known amongst the Egyptians. They called him Toth, because Enoch never died. And so when they would call up to Enoch, he was also an arbitrator between fallen angels at that time and the Lord and, and people. He was kind of like an arbitrator amongst men and angels and to God. And there was this one account where they would, they would call Enoch, they were calling Enoch for something, and he came down to them out of this chariot, probably the same chariot he was taken up into, that you read about Enoch being taken up in a, ch in a chariot, Enoch had never died. And so it's very interesting that the sun itself was the, the first thing, the first deity ever worshipped by the ancients. They had a fear and a respect and a reverence for the sun. And over the years, over the centuries, all of these secret societies, and even back then, what would happen was uh, the, the sun would be given uh, pagan names, rituals would be created, idols would be made, religions would be started, all, in, all over the sun itself. And so I'm going to get into more, more of that next week. I think what I'm really getting at with all of this, <laughs> there's a method to my madness. Uh, <laughs> keep your eyes on the sun. <laughs> uh, cause it gets very, very interesting. And what I want you guys to do this week is research the sun and the ancient sun worship cults. And, and not the cults themselves, but the reasons why they worshipped the sun itself. So I think you're going to get an eyeful. Uh, you can do this all online. I have found many sites online, very informative. Start at Wikipedia and you end up with a million different places. <laughs> but even even the Freemasons and the Catholic churches today, if you look in, in Catholic church symbols today, it's all about the sun. You see the sun and, and the, a face in the sun and all of their symbols. Uh, even the Vatican Square, even the Freemason symbols are all mimics of things pertaining to the sun. Is, is The sun itself is the foundation for just about everything uh, on this earth today. And so uh, I want you guys to go and do some independent research for this week, and then we'll talk about it next week. I'll bring out some more stuff next week on the sun, because I, I don't want to hammer you at all once with stuff. Sometimes it takes me years. It takes me years to absorb things. But one of the, the, the things about it all was that these ancient religions, these ancient Egyptians, and they weren't religions from the Egypt, they were dynasties. And, you know, like the Lord's always said, if you want to know what's going to happen at the end, you got to know the beginning. And so get back to the beginning. Dig, 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 dig. 
and you'll find out from these Babylonians and these Chaldeans, and, and that's where Abraham grew up, um, and even in Egypt, because uh, that's probably one of the most ancient races on earth is the Egyptians. They feared and reverenced the sun. They didn't put all these different uh, aspects to the sun like a lot of nations would do from their dynasties onward. But, they, but even the Masons, I find it interesting, is that will acknowledge the same thing that the Egyptians knew, and that there were inhabitants in the sun, that there were actual inhabitants that lived in the sun. And the Freemasons regarded them, regarded them as uh, archang archangels and angels, beings from heaven, uh, as also the Egyptians did. But you'll see where Satan takes over a big perversion of the whole thing when he starts attributing these beings with demonic names. And then a, a demon takes the personification of that angel or archangel or, or one of these inhabitants of the sun. And the people start worshiping the demon instead of being uh, paying honor to the actual inhabitant. And so that's what Satan does all the time. He'll take something that's of the Lord and then he'll... He'll put a demon to it, uh, and people start worshiping that demon. The same thing with the name of Jesus. Uh, it's not Yahushua. It's not the real name of the Son of God. Yahushua is the name of the Son of God. But people worship the name of Jesus, and in so doing, Satan has stood in his general, his one of his high-ranking master deceivers named Jesus, and all that praise that they're giving Jesus goes to this general, this Jesus. That's Satan's general. And so that's why I've said is the importance of calling Yahushua by his real name uh, and praying to Yahushua. Because if you're not praying to the Son of God, his real name, you're praying to Jesus, then the Lord ultimately knows, especially with young believers, that you're referring to him, the Son of God. But he's, he's patient. He wants you to learn his name. And then once you know his name, start referring to him by his name. Because otherwise, it's the same thing Lucifer did back in his rebellion against the Lord when he wanted to be worshipped by God and uh, Satan's rebellion and how did he do that and I've talked about this before he just changed the name of God he changed, and he deceived all those angels he deceived a third of them at accepting him as God and two thirds of the angels wouldn't stand for it they knew what he was doing because they knew Satan wanted to be worshipped as God and so he was changing the names of God and, and thus channeling all that praise going to the Most High God to himself under one of his own assumed names. That's how he does it. That's how he steals the praise of God's people and acclimates it to himself. And so some very interesting info that I'm just going to, that I've thrown out tonight, if you can digest it. And do go back this week and do some, do some study on the early Babylonians. I know a lot of you want to study what's going on today, and so the first thing you do is start studying Freemasonry. And that's really good because it'll give you an idea of exactly how our government's operating today because they're operating within the principles of Freemasonry. But what did Freemasonry come from? Where's, where's the roots of Freemasonry? And, and, you know, and then you go back to Solomon and how they stole his work and then attribute it to him and claim Solomon is their founder and blah, blah, blah. It's all of it very interesting, both aspects, just the whole fact of Freemasonry and the sun. And so various things, I know some people just get bored and you don't know what to research next and you just want the truth and you start praying for the truth and and so there's something you can bite and chew for a while and do your own your own uh, research on exactly how all the sun worship started and then how it's acclimated